Canva is one of the best free graphic design tools out there. And while it's fairly easy to learn, there's probably a lot of things that you didn't know about that you could do with Canva. In this video, I'm going to be going over 25 Canva tips and tricks that can help you become a better graphic designer. Now, if you've never used Canva before, I'll also link a full tutorial down below that I've made. And if you guys wanna see more Canva videos, be sure to hit that like button down below. And with that being said, let's get started. So the first trick is going to be adding frames. And all you have to do is search frame in the element tab. And then you're going to see all of these cool frames that you can add, which are essentially borders for your image. So for example, if I drag this phone frame and then take a picture and drag it on top of the frame, you can see the image automatically goes inside the frame, which is super cool. And you can double click on the image and then you can edit its positioning within the actual frame. So we can zoom in, readjust, and then we're good to go. Now, another cool trick is that you can actually add videos in Canva. So if you go into the video tab or upload your own videos, all you have to do is drag and drop them onto the canvas. And you can use videos within Canva to make things such as YouTube intros. And so if we just readjust this, what we can also do is we can go to the scissor icon over here and crop how long we want the video to be like so. And you can actually have a video in Canva. Now, what you can also do is add audio to your canvas, which is super cool. So you can upload your own songs or go into the audio tab and then drag and drop any songs that you like and they'll automatically be added. And you can tell they're added because down here, you're going to see the song name. And if you wanted to export this as a final product, you just have to go into download and make sure you're downloading it as an MP4, which will give you the video and the audio. Another tip is that you can also add hyperlinks to different elements. So if you wanted people to be able to go to a certain website, if they click on a certain part of your image and to do that, all you have to do is click on the element that you want to add a hyperlink to. And then you go over here and click on the link button and you can add any link that you want. So I'm just going to add my YouTube channel and click apply. And now if anyone clicked on the visit your website portion, they will be taken to my YouTube channel. Now, say you're working with Canva and you have a bunch of different pages in your project and it's hard to see them all when you're scrolling. You can also change the view to the page manager view. And all you have to do is go to the bottom right and click on the square over here and it'll open up the page view where you can see all of your pages, what's contained in them, as well as give you the option to add more pages or move them around if you want to as well. Now, another really cool feature of Canva is that it also has a brand kit. So if we go to the homepage and then click on brand kit, what we can see is that Canva will also allow you to have custom palettes set as well as custom fonts and your logos uploaded and ready to go. So whenever you make a new project, you can easily access the palettes and settings that match your brand. Now, this is more of a pro feature, but I believe that in the free version, you can make a limited palette that you can also use in your creations. Now, another way that I can save presets is by creating a template. So for example, say that I would post on Instagram a lot and I would use this design and I would edit the you know image and the caption, but I wanted this saved as a template. To do so, all I have to do is click on the three dots, go ahead and go to see all, and then save as a template and then choose the folder I want it in. And then I can click on move and then I can publish the template. And then if I go to the homepage, what I can see in my designs is that I actually have a template right here, which I just created. And now what I can do is every time I wanna create a new post, this template is ready and I can click on use this template and it'll create a copy which I can edit to make that custom Instagram post. Now, one feature that a lot of people don't use in Canva is grouping, but grouping is a really powerful feature because it allows you to move and manipulate multiple things at once. And to group, all you have to do is select the items by holding shift. So we click on this shape, for example, and we hold shift and we click on the second shape and then we can just go ahead and click on group and now these will move together. And so that's one way you can group it. Now, when you add some templates to your Canva project, some elements might already come grouped. So if say, for example, this math class template we have right here, we have these two pieces of text grouped together. And if you wanted to ungroup them so we can edit them individually, we would go ahead and click on ungroup and now we can move them one by one. 
Another cool hack if you're using the free version of Canva is that you can actually filter for free elements only when you're looking for them within the actual website. So if we go to elements and then we want to find say a book for example to match this template, once we click on search there's a mix of free and pro images but if we go to the filter button over here we can actually just have the free ones show and so you don't have to look for the free ones they'll appear by default if you set it in the filters now similarly you can also filter for elements by the color so if we're on the same page over here we can go back to the filter tab and then select what color we want our image to be so say for example we wanted to add a blue book all we have to do is select this blue and this blue and we can actually look at each one individually and find the perfect one for our template. Now a filter that's a bit harder to find is actually the font filter, which you can use to find fonts really quickly. So all you have to do is drag some text. So I'm just going to add this heading and go into the font tab. And of course, what you can do is you can look, look for a certain font name, but if you don't know what font you wanna actually use, you can look for different styles. So say for example, I search for calligraphy. Now it's going to show me all of the calligraphy fonts or if I wanted to look up serif fonts, for example, I can also sort it like so. And all you have to do is type and search for the type of font you're looking for, and a bunch of options will appear based on the filter that you set. Now, one really cool thing about Canva elements is that you can also customize the colors of them. So even if you find an element that you like that may not match the style of your image, you can still edit it so it does match. And all you have to do is click on an element and you're going to see all of the colors used pop up. So for example, this lavender is the hair. And if I was to just click on this lavender, I can actually just change the color of this guy over here to match the style of my image. And I can do this for a lot of elements within Canva. Now Canva also makes it really easy for people to export transparent images. So say for example, I click on this blue background and I delete it. There's no background here, but you can see that it's white and it doesn't look like a PNG. But because there's no background, I can actually export this as a transparent image by going into download and checking off transparent background and making sure PNG is suggested. And then all I have to do is click on download and it's going to prepare my design. And now if I upload this image to my project and I drag it to this blue background, we can see there's actually no white background because this image saved as a transparent file. Now Canva also makes it very easy to align and position single or multiple objects. So say for example, I select this apple, I can go into the position tab over here and easily align it to the top, the bottom, the center, the middle, and whatnot. And what's even cooler is that if I click on this apple and shift click on this kiwi, I can actually align both of these images. So say for example, I wanted to middle align them, I can just click on middle. Uh, if I wanted them both in the center, I could click on center. And I can use these position tools to also align multiple elements. Now, one trick that can save you a lot of hassle and time is the lock feature. So say for example, I'm editing this image and I only wanna move around the sun because the sky is the background. You know, often you might accidentally end up dragging and moving things and you're going to have to undo it. But what you can do instead is lock the background image or whatever image you don't wanna move around and you're done with. So all you have to do is click on the image you want to lock and then click on this lock button. And now that this background is locked, no matter where I click on it, I actually can't move it around. And if I wanted to unlock it, all I have to do is click on it and click on this lock button again. And now it is unlocked. Now we're going to be doing a quick speed run of some really helpful Canva shortcuts that you're going to be using often. So the first type is going to be shortcuts you can use to create elements. So if you want to add text really quickly, all you have to do is press T and the text will show up and you can customize it. Now, if you wanted to add a line, all you have to do is click on L and a line will show up. If you want to create a rectangle, all you have to do is click on the R key and a rectangle will show up. And then for circles, you have to press on the C key and you're going to be able to make a circle. Now, once you have a single element on your canvas, if you want to duplicate it, all you have to do is click on it and then press Control D or Command D if you're on Mac. And as you can see, it automatically creates a duplicate and you don't have to copy and paste it. Now, there's also shortcuts you can use to easily group things. So first of all, if you wanted to select everything in the layer, you just have to press Control A or Command A if you're on Mac. Now, if you wanted to group all of these elements together, all you have to do is press Control G or Command G if you're on Mac and everything is grouped. So as you can see now, if we move one element, they all move together because they're grouped. 
but let's say we wanted to ungroup them. To ungroup elements, all you have to do is press Control Shift G or Command Shift G if you're on Mac. Now there's also different shortcuts you can use to make copies of designs and pages. So say for example, we wanted to make a copy of this Instagram post that we made. All we have to do is click on these three dots and then click on make a copy. And we're going to be able to create an identical version of the file. Now say instead we wanted to create a copy of this image over here and we wanted to edit a similar you know, page. All we have to do is click on this duplicate button. And instead of duplicating the entire file, it'll duplicate the page instead. Now, another time saver that you can use is the drag and drop feature to upload images faster. So all you have to do is find the image location and then drag it into the upload tab and it'll automatically be added. And this makes it really easy to add multiple files instead of using this upload media button, which can take more time. Now finally, we're going to be going over resizing shortcuts. So right now, if we were to resize this image, we can see that it's not aligned to the center point. So what you can do instead is hold the Alt key and then resize. And as you can see, the center point stays anchored. Now, if you wanted to only crop out a certain proportion of this image when you're resizing it, you can also hold the Shift key and then drag. And now the way the resizing is working is that it's also cutting out parts of the image instead of just resizing it proportionately. And if you wanted to resize it in any other way, you could use the resize button over here and lock or unlock the dimensions and proportions. Now, the final few tips and tricks are going to be for people that are using the pro version of Canva. And if you wanna try out the pro version, I'll also link a trial down below. But the first tip we're going to be going over is actually removing the background in a single click, which is really, really cool. And so to do this, all you have to do is select the image where you wanna remove the background, and then you can go into effects and click on the background remover, and it's automatically going to detect the background and then delete it. So as we can see, just like that, almost magically, the background is gone. Now, another cool trick is that you can automatically resize an image and you can do this in a single click as well. So say for example, this is an Instagram post and we want to optimize it for Facebook. All we have to do is go to resize and then I can look up Facebook and there's Facebook ad, which is perfect. And I just click on it and then I click copy and resize. And it's going to create a new file with the entire project resized for the proportions I want. So for somebody who posts on a bunch of different social media sites, this is a really fast way to resize all of the images so you can post across all the social media sites really quickly. Another unknown feature is that you can also add comments to elements. So say you're working with multiple people on a file and you wanted to add a comment for somebody, all you have to do is click on any element and then click on the speech bubble over here and you can add a comment. So maybe I can tell someone to add a drop shadow. I could also tag them and then I click on comment and the comment is added. And to resolve it, all I have to do is press on the check mark. And finally, Canva can also be used to make GIFs. So right here, I have an image of a subscribe button and I also have these arrows, which I got from the elements tab. And I can actually save this as a GIF and no, it is not a coincidence that this is a subscribe image. If you guys do like what you see, be sure to subscribe. But to save this as a GIF, all you have to do is go into download. And then instead of MP4 video, just make sure you have GIF selected and then select the page you want to export as a GIF. And then you click done and download and it's going to prepare and download it as a GIF. Although one note is that the file sizes are usually pretty large. And so if you wanted a smaller file size, you're going to have to run it through another program to shrink the file size. But those are all the tips and tricks for Canva. Now, hopefully this video did help you learn a thing or two that could help you become a better Canva graphic designer. And if it did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.